Lauren doesn't understand the concept. <laughs> Paul Ravello, ProPhysique.com. We're doing a Q&A video. We posted the question on Lauren's Instagram page, so if you're not following her, shame on you. Uh, and we got a lot of questions, because she's very popular, so we're going to try to answer a couple. Alright guys, so we're here at the iconic powerhouse North Tampa. I'm here with Lauren Conlin. We're going to answer some questions. Uh, Lauren had 54 comments posted on her uh, on her Instagram page. So Thank we're obviously, you guys. I really thought we were going to get like three. <laughs> so this, yeah. is, this is exciting, but obviously we can't answer all of these in uh, one video. That would be way too long and I also can't keep... <laughs> Follow Colin. Colin DeWay. <laughs> He's awesome. I'll link his uh, Instagram down below. If I was talking this slow, like for 54 <laughs> comments, it would probably be like a three hour uh, video. Oh, you do have the brain snaps as good. <laughs> brain. Okay. Brownies and barbells. So, brownies and barbells. Yes, the brownies. Sorry. <laughs> when calculating macros for weight loss, is there a superior split such as the 40, 40, 20? I assume they mean 40% would be protein and carbs and 20% would be fat. Yeah, I think that's... Um, Alright, so let's talk about this 40-40-20 diet. I think I've seen it referred to as the zone diet in the past where you're basically getting 40% carbohydrates, 40% protein, and 20% mm -hmm. of your calories are coming from fat. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that as a preferred method? So if you don't know where to start and you think that's something that you would be able to adhere to, um, going from no tracking to tracking, maybe try that out. I always suggest, and I think you do too, doing protein as far as grams per either body weight uh, in pounds or kilograms. So I would recommend 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound. Mm -hmm. For most people, it's pretty appropriate. I think if you're getting at least a gram per pound, that's a good place to start. Um, some people would say a little bit less is fine. Some people would say maybe more, especially in a calorie deficit, I would say more. But regardless, good place to start, 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Yes. Now, after you've done that, the carbs and the fats uh, are really dependent on, again, what you like. So if you're somebody who really enjoys fats, and I would say only eat 20% of your calories from fat, maybe you're not going to adhere to that. Um, and likewise, if you're somebody who likes carbs, you know, same idea. So you're going to really have to play around with that yourself. Yep. It's important to find a calorie balance that is good for you based on your goals, whether that's maintenance, gaining, or losing. Um, and you can always change things, remember that. So start somewhere. Start. I always recommend starting pretty balanced, no matter what you do. Yep. And then you can kind of tease out the details from there. So maybe do the protein, grams per body weight, and then you can do 50-50 split for the rest of your calories with carbs and fats. If you're gaining too fast or you're losing too fast or whatever it may be, you can always change up the ratios and then go from there. Yeah, I think my opinion, protein and fats should have a preset number. You should have amount per gram for each and then carbohydrates should pretty much fill in the gaps as yeah. far as your total calories. Don't be afraid of fats. Don't be afraid of carbohydrates. Yeah. They're both beneficial for you. If you prioritize your carbohydrates around training, that's fine. But don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them later in the day. Um, but 40, 40, 20, I think it's a great baseline to start from. And if you're already tracking calories and you start to track your macronutrients, that's where you can really start to get in there and um, notice some changes and benefits from adjusting things. Okay, so Heather Young Fit asked, if my main goal is to build my glutes and hams, how many times a week can I focus on working that area? Right now, I do two days only out of a seven day period. That's that's good frequency. That's a good amount. Uh, so, the training frequency changes personally for me when I'm dieting versus not dieting. Right? right. So for me, when I'm not dieting, I usually will train less frequently, but I'll have longer sessions. And then the opposite is true when dieting. I can't train for as long usually, I find, and I'll do more frequent sessions, sure. right? So if you're off season and you can have like a killer glute workout where you just do you know so many different things, two days a week is totally fine. If you find that you want to add in more or that that's not enough anymore for you, that's also fine. What I would recommend is don't go for 
from two days to then all of a sudden training them every day per week, something like that, that'd be a little bit silly. Um, but what you can do is also add in things that are very, um, not taxing on your body. Sure. Right, so you could do some band work or body weight type stuff and really just like hammer it out, get a glute pump, uh, get a few sets in of high volume training, not necessarily something that's going to cause a lot of damage, it's going to take a lot of long time to recover from. Yeah. So that's where the band and body weight stuff really comes in and I really like it. Yeah. Um, so think about like, you know, four sets of 30 on something and do that for maybe two different exercises and then you can add that on to maybe like a shoulder and an arm day. And then you have a little bit more glute and hamstring hypertrophy but not too much damage so that you can still contribute to the heavy training and kind of keep moving forward. And then like I said, play around with the frequency. Maybe you don't have time to train a lot. Maybe you're like, hey, I can only train 45 minutes per session, but I can train six days per week. Well, that's fine. Maybe you have two hours to train. You know, it really depends on your schedule, but I wouldn't be afraid to train more, but also don't jump into too much training because that's probably going to be unnecessary and then you're most likely not going to recover, especially if you're dieting. Yeah, I like Obviously, she's the glute builder, so we will let her stick with that answer. So we both have a strong opinion on this next topic uh, from Ali, Sun in Wonderland. How long of an improvement season do you suggest taking? This is a multi-tiered answer, very individual dependent. Let's cover uh, your perspective and then I'll get mine. So, there's not really much as far as like literature goes or as far as any kind of research goes, but there are some things to point towards. As long as you have dieted to reach a certain goal, you should take that much time off right. at least to recover. Again, air quotes, not really much concrete stuff with this, but that's the kind of the trend that we have seen as far as literature goes. Now, in your opinion though, if you're coming out of a show contest prep mm -hmm. diet, that initial few months where you're coming out of that diet, you're not really in full building mode because no, 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 the hormones no. haven't replaced. No, yeah, you're basically just kind of getting back to a baseline, yeah. right? So there's a few ways to go about this. Um, and again, he said multi-tiered in my brain right now. Like hearing that question yeah. is like going like 18 different ways. Um, I think an improvement season is vitally important. If anyone's followed my journey this year, I took eight months off in a surplus. I immediately went into a surplus, not exaggerating. Um, I was and, there. Yeah. Immediate. Uh, so eight months in a surplus, which to bikini girls is like eternity, yeah. and you know, for maybe for a bodybuilder that doesn't seem very long, but again, for bikini girls, uh, that can be very, very long, right? Because first of all, our improvement season looks a little bit different than maybe Absolutely. bodybuilders would. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to add you know 30 pounds of muscle or something like that. Um, you know, they're fine tune, fine tuning things and changing things now. I do think it's important to take time off. I do think it's important to take stuff away from only looking at the scale, tracking your food down to the gram, you know, being obsessive about things. I think mentally that is very unhealthy to be like that all the time. I'm really pro living your life. You know, you're more than three numbers on a scale. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, bringing your food scale everywhere. So I think if you have gotten your calories back to a level that you would think is either maintenance or something that you can eat and you know feel good have energy in the gym recover you know not stuffing your face but you know yeah. you're feeling good and then you can kind of take a step away from you know all the hardcore numbers and things like that and really just mentally give yourself a break i think that's when your improvement season has really begun yeah. and you're doing a good job now if you have a lot of shows lined up or if you have a lot of things going on obviously this is going to be different for everyone hence the multi-tiered answer right um but for the most part I would suggest, you know, a few months, that's a really broad term, <laughs> but a few yeah. months to give yourself time to be able to eat again, be able to have energy inside and outside of the gym. Remember, there's more to life than just the gym, right? Um, you know, feeling good and not really having that food anxiety, not having to feel like you have to bring your scale of where you're going to gain five pounds, things like that, really important. Uh, so from my perspective, she has her bikini perspective, from my perspective, it all depends on what your goal you're setting for your next competition date that your off is going to be. Lauren, as a highly competitive pro only a year ago, did not need to take a year off to get to a place where she was going to be more competitive. For myself, the first time I came off a show and realized what my next step was, I immediately decided I was going to take I was going to take two to three years for my next goal. So it's highly dependent. 
if you're trying to be one of the top natural bodybuilders in the world, maybe you take three, four, five years between shows. Uh, if you're at that top of your level, if you're at that Marshall, Marshall Johnson level, if you're at Lawrence level where you're already there, you're on the cusp, maybe you only take six months to reverse and then you get back into contest prep mode because that's what you needed to get to your next goal. Mm -hmm. yeah, so 100%. pay attention to your goal and uh, don't get addicted to the stage. Getting addicted to the stage can be detrimental for yes. long-term success. You know, girls compete around the year and never get better. You know. Try to structure your shows uh, close together if possible. That's what I'm doing this year. Um, I will be doing several shows and they will be within a several month week period of each other. Even though I've been dying for five and a half months, um, the actual shows will be within about a six-ish yeah. week period. Plan them together. Optimize. And there's your, enough uh, shows nowadays that you can do that. So. And in my opinion, it's a lot harder to get stage lean than it is to stay stage lean. However, the amount of time you stay stage lean might change how sane you are as a person. So, yes. <laughs> so don't tell yourself, oh, I'm going to get stage lean and do shows for six months. Don't make yourself that promise. Go see how it feels. See how you're doing. All right. Which kind of leads into the next question. Um, next question is from Powerlifting Barbie. I don't know who that is. Oh, no, that's not the one. How are you always so gorgeous? <laughs> <laughs> like, first of all, I do trim my beard. Um, I don't wear any makeup. Um, I mean, oh, this was your page. I can't do this. Really. Awkward. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Megan. Okay, so Sarah Huns has another question that kind of relates to the off season. And it goes like this After competition season, what should a female competitor do or not do to make sure her, hormone, her hormones safely return back to normal? Such as blood work, see a doctor, probiotics, etc. Love you, Lauren. You're amazing, and good luck with the rest of the crowd. Thanks, girl. Uh, well, so first, uh, for a lot of females, if you are not on birth control, uh, this is very different than if you are on birth control, right? So these answers are very different based on hormone levels. Um, so if you are not on birth control, meaning that your estrogen and everything should be at a normal level, uh, that can be really affected by dieting. Some people are don't look at me. I don't no, 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 I'm not. I, I'm just trying to like make it look not. Um, yeah, you know all about that, right? Um, so there are some people who uh, will diet and get very, very lean, and they will maintain their period the entire time. There are some people who get below a certain body fat level and it's not competition lean and they lose their period. So it really depends on each individual. Now again, if you're in birth control, this completely changes it because you're supplementing with exogenous estrogen and potentially progesterone. So it's kind of hard to tell when you're doing that. Um, but if you are not on the pill or anything like that, then you know losing your period can mean you know hormones are imbalanced. This is very normal for people to lose this, right? And having it come back generally is just a matter of time. Yeah. Um, a matter of adding in some calories and adding a little bit of body fat. And again, I think that's one of the scary things for competitors is when you actually get blood and hormone tests at the end of contest prep mm -hmm. when you're abnormally lean. Yeah. And, Everything's going to be doctors low. doctors overreact to yes. that and they want to immediately put you on a bunch of things, yeah. which listen to your doctor, I'm not suggesting you don't, but perhaps you wait till your body's normalized a little bit before yeah. you. So I would say it's if you have the means or you have the funds to get blood work done, it's always a positive thing. Get it done maybe in the beginning of the prep so you have a baseline. Get it done at the end and then do it again a few months later. Yeah. Um, there is a very distinct feeling of knowing when things are off with your body. Um, generally speaking, if it's hormone related, you'll feel very tired, very sluggish, like I don't want to get out of bed. I experienced this last year after my last prep um, and I am on birth control so it was kind of hard to read the tests as far as like blood work levels, but I really, really felt the effect of all those things. So from my experience and what I, I know, you know, working with competitors and also have read a little bit about this, um, most of the research on this is actually in female endurance runners, um, but it's the same idea, hyperactivity and lower food. They get food. ultra lean though as well. Yeah, they get lean, um, they're so over Some of female competitors become endurance athletes. Yeah, some, right? Um, so basically what they're finding is that, you know, after several months of adding in calories, you're, you're likely going to establish your normal again. Yeah. So just give it some time. It sucks to say that um, there's no real concrete answer, but if you do have the means to get blood work done, by all means do it. But do it at the beginning so you have a baseline and then kind of continuously do it. Alright, so Sarah Ford asks, we're going to get off the science topic and get on the uh, fitness community topic. How do you meet local friends in the fitness community? 
how did we meet? Um, how did we you met at Lane's camp, right? Exactly. So attend <laughs> events and attend I'm seminars. I'm the worst friend ever. I totally how did we meet? Attend <laughs> events and seminars in your area. Attend competitions. Attend things that you're interested in because that's when you're going to find like-minded individuals. Yes. Yeah. So we just happened to meet at Lane's uh, camp, and then the next year I found out she was coming to USF to go to school, and I was moving to Tampa area. She went to Nationals. I went to. So it's just been. We found that our paths kept crossing, and then we found that we had a lot of common goals and interests, and. It's just kind of gone from there. So, and that's how a lot of my friends are. And that's including Lane now. We include Lane in that discussion. Even my wife. My wife and I, when we first started dating, it was about, you know, going to the gym sometimes for us. Yeah, that's um, how me and Ryan met. I mean, same yeah. thing. So, going to different events, um, you don't have to, everyone thinks of like the Olympia and the r which are amazing to go to. Um, but you don't even have to, you don't even have to go to that. Go to something small. There's so many events yeah. nowadays, so many workshops, so many, you know, little expos, at shows, you know, within them. So, finding fit Fitness boards, maybe a Facebook page or a community group that has kind of some common interests like flexible dieting or whatever it is that you're into, and then you find out if those people are local, you know, something can come Even from like there. your team, if you know, different teammates are in the same area, you guys can it up, things like that. Alright, so Lola Berry Teen asks, what keeps you motivated to repeat the dieting, lifting, and cardio? Yes, there's shows, but when things get tough, when you don't want to go, what's your driving factor besides just a deadline for a competition? This is hard to answer, okay. most definitely. Uh, competition is that any kind of deadline help no matter what, especially yeah. when you are doing something extreme, like yeah. a competition diet, right? Uh, but mostly, I've always competed for myself to be better okay. for myself. But now, my priorities have also shifted towards being a better coach, uh, which is really cool. So I used to have a, you know, you know, I used to be very, very small with all this. But it was always semi-selfish just because I was in school and whatever, but now that I'm out and I'm fully focused on coaching, it's about getting better for myself and also for my clients. Like, I've taken so many notes, this prep and details, just because I want to look back and go, okay, if this worked for me, it might work for them too. And really trying to walk the walk per se you know when I have people who say oh I had to travel for work and I couldn't eat out and I go no well listen I was I was gone this week on competition yeah. prep I made it work and I did this so I can show people how I'm doing things and they can do the same for themselves so it's a learning experience for all of us and at the end of the day I love competing I'm a competitive person. this is the outlet for me and if you don't love it, then maybe you shouldn't do it. Yeah, what drives you, like say it's off season, it's like a Thursday and you're tired, what gets you to go to the gym on that day when you might yeah. otherwise not go? Nothing, there's no deadline. Yeah, I mean, there is some days where, you know, honestly, there might be a time where you just don't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there, it's okay to say, like, every day isn't, like, the most yeah. badass day. Like, I am not going to sit here and lie and say that every day I'm like, yeah, let's go work out. Like, no, not every day is like that. You know what I mean? Well, okay, so let me add to that. <laughs> what if there was never another competition? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd still go. Exactly. Because that, I love training. That was my point. Um, to answer your question from my perspective is that this is a lifestyle, and yeah. I don't think we compete because we want to compete. I think we compete as an extension of that lifestyle yes. to give ourselves motivation. I had been lifting weights for more than a decade before I ever decided to even consider doing a show. So if you took away competition, if you took away YouTube, if you took away everything, I would still go for oh, yeah. the love of it. Uh, yeah, without the deadline there, I may miss a day or two more, but honestly, I think, you know, the I The gym's just I part of my just, life. It's, like, it's, yeah. I think once you've done it for a long time and you really yeah. truthfully enjoy it, for the fact of just training and feeling good and yeah. just bettering yourself, I feel like it betters you in a lot of different areas in your life. And, and, and it builds its like own that. momentum because she and I are both coaches. She and I are both, you know, trying to put out a good image for our clients and for the people around us. So. You know, it builds its own momentum. There are days when I just don't have the energy to come, but I think, you know, it's actually my job now to come to the gym, which yeah. is a wonderful thing. So, staying yeah, motivated is, it's, as weird as it sounds, motivation builds itself mm -hmm. because you, you do it so frequently. So, hopefully that that's sufficient. All right, guys, well, that's it. It's time to get on to the gym and train a little bit. We've been bugging everybody here by having the camera out. We're gonna lift, I'll get this edited and out on the interwebs on Thursday. Thank you.
Yes, thank you guys. Anything you want to talk about? No, thank you so much for the questions. Like this was an overwhelming response. Yeah, I think obviously maybe we have to do another one. Maybe yeah. we'll do it at my house where it's not so loud. And noisy. we definitely need to do uh, more of these. Seeing that I just yeah. made one post at a random time and got this many comments. So yeah. thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. If we didn't get to your question, um, maybe we'll do another one, part yeah. two to this, or maybe we'll just, you know, we'll post again about doing a Q&A. And we plan to do more footage and content. We have some things coming up in the future. Lauren's extremely busy with her business growing. She actually got some shirts made. Can you tell people about that? I posted about it. Um, it has its own page, Local Fit Tees. Yeah. So, um, me and Ryan started this. It's it's pretty small, but we're excited about it. It's going to keep growing. We've had a really good response with all the shirts that we've She, she kind of has the same philosophy that I do, that we're kind of building like a community. Mm -hmm. So, you just want to give that sense of belonging and I think yeah. apparel and, you know, traveling around and meeting people and just being a part of the fitness community. movement that we, <laughs> like, redefining healthy, that's like her tagline and we're trying motivates to us. Yeah, so, all right, guys. Uh, it's Paul from... Com. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. If you made it this far, hit the like button. And we will, uh, we'll talk to you soon.